Welcome everyone. For today's prep, we're gonna to start to look at optimization. So we're gonna see how derivatives help us optimize a function. So figure out where it has a max or a min. And we're gonna be able to reuse a lot of the techniques we've developed, fi figuring out the intervals of increase, decrease, and um, the intervals of concavity. So for today's prep, we're gonna look at the first derivative test. So as the name suggests, it's gonna use the first derivative. But what this test is gonna allow us to do is, well, first find all critical numbers, but then be able to classify those critical numbers as either a max or min or neither. So let's start with our main results. And the main result here is called Fermat's theorem. So what this says is that if our function f has a local max or min, at x equals c, then one of two things has to happen. Either the derivative is equal to zero there, or the derivative is undefined there. So this theorem tells us the possible locations where f has a max or min. keyword there on possible. So just because an x value satisfies one of these two conditions um, doesn't necessarily mean that we definitely have a max or a min there. But if our function does have a max or a min, then it has to happen at one of these two places. So this gives us a really good place to, if we're kind of considering all the places along the x-axis, this is going to really narrow it down. So these are the only places where we can have a max or a min. And because of that, these are kind of important, and we've used this terminology before, we call the x values critical numbers. So if the derivative is equal to zero, or the derivative is undefined at x equals c, we, see, we say x equals c is a critical number for the original function f. And we're going to be interested in figuring out where our function has a max or a min. So there is one more additional requirement here. C has to be in the domain of f. So we want to know where does our function f have a max or a min. So we are only going to look at places where our function is defined. Okay. So let's just see some quick examples, graphical examples of, you know, the different scenarios here. So in the first graph... This, has, uh, this function has a local min at x equals c. Okay. Well, what's happening? And we know it's a local min because if we were standing on that point, it's uphill in both directions. Okay. So it's a low point on our graph. Well, what's happening to the derivative there? At this point, the derivative is equal to zero. So the derivative at this x equals c is equal to 0. And we can tell that because if we were to draw the tangent line, well, we can see it's a nice kind of rounded curve there. And momentarily, the graph flattens out. So if we were to draw our tangent line, it would be a nice horizontal tangent line. At that point. And when it's a horizontal tangent line, we know the slope of it is zero. So that's why our derivative is zero there. Um, well, in the second graph, this is also a local min. So this graph, we also have a local min at x equals c. But now we see something very different. What's happening here is we have this sharp change in the slope. So when we have a cusp like this, or a corner, this is where our derivative is undefined. So the original function f has a local min at each of these points. And what also is happening in the first case is that the derivative, its derivative is equal to zero at the local min. And in the second case, the derivative is undefined at the local min. So you can kind of see what the graphs would look like in each of those two scenarios, derivative being zero or derivative being undefined. Now, like we said, those places are only possible locations. 
So just because the derivative is equal to zero at a point doesn't necessarily mean you have a max or a min there. And that's, my head is <laughs> covering it up. That's what the third option is. So this is neither. Max or min. So there's, if we're standing on the point at x equals c, if we were standing at that point, well, it's uphill in one direction, but then it's downhill in the other direction. So it's, this isn't really a high point because I can go higher on one side, and this isn't really a low point because I can go lower if I keep going in the other direction. But what does happen here is that the graph does flatten out. So if we were to draw the, the tangent line here, it would also be a horizontal tangent line. So at that point, our derivative is equal to 0. So just because the derivative is equal to 0 doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a max or a min. You could have kind of like this thing. You almost want to think of this as like a plateau. So you can think of a, high, a, a max as like a mountain peak, and then a low point, a min, is, is like a valley. And then this is kind of like a plateau. The, the kind of graph levels off for a second. Um, okay, so, but these critical numbers give us possible locations. So they, they kind of narrow down the whole x-axis, though, into specific points that we can just look at. So the question is, we're going to find the critical numbers, and that narrows it down quite a bit. But then we have to go a little bit further and confirm, do we have a max or a min at those points? And we can also use the first derivative for this. So if we know we have a critical number at x equals c, and our function's continuous, if we do our sign chart for f prime and we see that it changes from positive to negative, well then our function has a max. And if our derivative changes from negative to positive, well then our function has a min. And if there's not a sign change, if f prime does not change signs, well then it's, it's neither. So it's not a local extremum. All right, so let's look at uh, two of these, two graphs here just to kind of confirm our what we're what that first derivative test says. All right, so here's a function y equals f of x. It's not the derivative. This is we're just given the function. And we see that this has a local max at x equals 2. x equals 2 is a high point on this graph. So if we were to do a sign chart for f prime We would have x equals 2 plotted. We know it's a critical point because our derivative would be 0 there. Again, horizontal tangent line and all. And if we were to do a sign chart for f prime, we would have our two intervals, minus infinity to 2 and 2 to infinity. And on this section, our graph is moving up. So all the tangent lines have positive slope over here. So over here, f prime is positive. And then on the other side of this graph, we would, if we were to have our sign chart for f prime, we would see that all the tangent lines are pointing down. So all the derivative values over there would be negative. And what's going on is we're switching from increasing to decreasing. So what our first derivative test says is if we go from positive on one side to negative on the other side, well, then we have a local max there. And kind of same thing or similar thing in the second graph, this is we have a local min at x equals 2. And what you would see on a sign chart for f prime is, let's get our x-axis going here. You see that we have a horizontal tangent at x equals 2. So that means x equals 2 is a critical number because the derivative is 0 there. Again, that's splitting the x-axis up into two intervals. So we've got everything less than 2 and then everything bigger than 2. And then we just want to figure out what is f prime. Is it positive or negative? 
on each of those intervals. And if we look on this section, we see that our curve, all the tangent lines would be pointing down. So it would be negative over here. And then here, all of our tangent lines are pointing up. So it would be positive. And that means F is decreasing on one side and increasing on the other side. And our first derivative test says that when we switch from negative F prime being negative on one side to being positive on the other side of our critical number, well, then you have a local min. So that's precisely what this says. If we go from positive to negative, then we have a max. And if we go from negative to positive, then we have a min. Um, so in the cases of having neither, you would end up with something possibly like the one of one of these two examples. So if we were to do our sign chart, again, the graph flattens out momentarily at these two points. Uh, we would have a horizontal tangent line at each of those. So the derivative is zero there, so it is a critical number. But in the first case, if we were to do our sign chart for f prime, what we would find is that on the first interval, it would be positive, And then on the second interval, it would also be positive. So the graph's moving up, and then it keeps moving up. So there's no sign change. So it's not a max or a min. So this is neither. And then same thing over here. This is also neither. It's not a max or a min. And if you were to do your sign chart for this one, again, same, same idea, but you're going to find that f prime is negative on the left side because our graph's moving down. And then it's also negative over here. So there's no sign change over here. So it's neither. So figuring out the where a function has a max or a min comes down to just doing the sign chart for f prime, which we have practice for. The so same steps then as doing our intervals of increase decrease. So let's. Let's try one example. Do we want to do? Now nah, let's do example two. Find the the local. Eh. Maybe example three. Yeah, let's do example three. All right. So find the local max and min values for this function. All right. So. First step, we want to find our critical numbers. So actually, we're just going to follow the steps that we would do for increase, finding intervals of increase, decrease. So first step, let's calculate f prime of x. So we've worked with this function before a few times now, finding intervals of increase, decrease, and also intervals of concavity. So let's calculate f prime. And we end up with 4x cubed minus 12x squared. And same kind of steps as before. Try to factor this right away. So we've factored this one into 4x squared times x minus 3. And then we want to look for the critical numbers. So. There's two ways we can have critical numbers, either where the derivative is 0 or where the derivative is undefined. So kind of standard thing we've been doing. Usually the only way we have the derivative being undefined is if we have a fraction. And if we look at our derivative here, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no fractions, there's no division. So no division by 0, so we're all good. So we're not going to have any critical numbers this way. but since we have it nice and factored, we can set it, the factored version, equal to 0. And then we can set each of the individual factors equal to 0. And solve those for x. So we get x equals 0 in the first case. And then we get x equals 3 in the second case. And these are the critical numbers. 
And worth mentioning, these are in the domain of our function. So they're in the domain of the original function. All right, so now let me just move that up a little bit. So now we do our sign chart for f prime, just like we've done before. And draw the x-axis. Plot the critical numbers that we found, x equals 0 and x equals 3. Get them on there. Do the interval negative infinity to 0, 0 to 3, and 3 to infinity. And then just figure out the sine of f prime. So we do our sine chart, 4x squared, x minus 3. We're just kind of listing all of our individual factors here for f prime. And then we'll use that to figure out the sine of f prime. And for the first factor, the 4x squared, well, 4 is positive, and x squared, that's an even exponent, so no matter what number we plug in, that's always going to be positive. So we can just go right across. And then for the x minus 3 factor, um, that's going to start off negative, keep going negative, and then once we get to this x equals 3, that's where it's going to change signs. So once we get bigger than 3, that x minus 3 factor is going to turn positive. Okay, so we've done that before. Um, and if you want to check, you can, you can use the test numbers to kind of help figure that out. All right, so what's going on with f prime? Well, here it's negative because we have a positive times a negative. Same thing, positive times a negative. So it was negative here, and then it's positive here. So what we're able to do then is now we're able to say, well, at x equals 0, there's no sign change. So there's no sign change there. So x equals 0, we're able to classify. And I'm running out of room, so there we go. <laughs> All right, so we want to classify this. So if we look at our, at our sign chart, we filled it in. I guess that was step 4. Now we can classify our critical numbers. So at x equals 0, no sign change. So what that means is neither. It's not a max or a min. If we look at x equals 3, well, use a different color. We look at x equals 3, well, we go from minus to plus. So what that means is we have a local min. So we got a local min there. Now, a way to kind of help remember that is draw in, if f prime is negative, that means our graph is going down. And then if f prime is positive, that means the original function is going up. So just kind of draw in what the graph looks like. So at this point, we're decreasing on one side. And then we flatten out, and then we switch to increasing. So when you draw that shape in, well, it looks like you're going to have a local min. And that's what this test says. All right. So we're going to try a few more of these in class. And right now we've only classified these critical numbers, and I want to save this for class. We're actually going to find the max and min values. All right, so let's pause there, and we'll see you. Bye-bye.